I've been told it's rude to make faces, so I let a computer do it for me. But who wants to look at this face all day when the computer can make as many faces as it wants out of thin air? Just like that. That's right. None of these people are real. They were generated using a neural network made publicly available online, which lets you generate an unlimited amount of images that look just like a real person. In this video, I'm going to walk through how you can make these on your own for the low, low price of only $1 for every 10,000 images you generate. All you need to get started is an Amazon Web Services account. Go and register for one right now. It's completely free and you'll need some basic cloud computing knowledge like how to SSH onto your instance. Once you're in AWS, get your game face on. It's time to make some faces. First go to EC2 and here we're going to launch an instance in the cloud. So an instance is just a virtual server we can connect to and run code from. So we're going to start from using the deep learning AMI. Type in deep learning, enter. And here Amazon has a preset AMI, which is an image from which it'll launch your instance on. So it'll come with Ubuntu and some pre-installed software from you from NVIDIA. Makes everything easier to get up and running with TensorFlow and CUDA using the NVIDIA GPU it has on, on the instance. Much, much easier. So just select this to start. Now very important on this step is to actually pick the correct instance type with the GPU by NVIDIA we need for the AMI to actually run properly. So here, just search for p2.xlarge. So these are the NVIDIA GPU instance types. p2.xlarge comes with one GPU, which is enough for what we're doing. And hit that, and we go to the next screen. Now keep in mind, this costs 90 cents an hour at the time of this filming. Some of these other options can cost a lot more money, especially the P3 type, which uses NVIDIA's state-of-the-art V100 GPU which is something that we can use to actually train our own neural nets and we can cover in a later video if you'd like. Just let me know in the comments below. So now we go to configure instance details. Here, if you know what you're doing, you can change a couple things like networking, VPCs. If you just have a basic account, don't worry about it. Be warned here, when you pick your disk size, the 75 gigabytes is just enough for the base image to fit with all the pre-installed software. So if you just use this, you'll barely have any free room to save any of the images to. So I recommend doing 80 gigs to start. So you have five extra gigabytes on the machine uh, to store some of your images on, just give you a little bit of room for scratch work. It's not a lot, but also keep in mind you have to pay per gigabyte per hour or so on Amazon. So, you know, don't go too crazy unless it's not coming out of your own pocket. Okay, next thing we do is security groups. Just usually pick an existing one, your default one. I don't know why Amazon always prompts you to make a new one. You usually just want to pick an existing one. Very important in your security group, make sure that under the source, you see a bunch of zeros or your own IP address if you're super paranoid. This basically says where Amazon is going to allow incoming connections from, meaning people are, are able to SSH into your server from. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Just make it available to the public internet so you can SSH into it. You're going to run your code, get your results, and shut the server down within an hour. Review and launch. And launch this bad boy. So what I just did was selected my own key pair that I got from Amazon. If this is your first time launching an instance on Amazon, it'll generate a key pair for you, which you download, and then you use that key pair to connect to the instance. Now, you may get stuck at this screen with this warning over here. All this means is that you have a brand new AWS account and you haven't actually requested limit usages to use the P2 instance type, which like I mentioned, is a little bit pricey at 90 cents an hour. So Amazon just wants to make sure you know what you're doing. All you have to do is fill out this request form. So just stick with the defaults for the most part, EC2 instances. Here it's gonna ask you which region you want them in. So I usually stick in Virginia. Next, the primary instance type, P2.xlarge. And then it's gonna ask you how many you want. Just hit one. And here you have to write a little bit about why you want them. Uh, so I had to do this to actually get my p2.xlarge. I just wrote I was interested in testing out StyleGAN. Um, just write something like that. You want to use it for research purposes. Definitely don't type in, I want to make a bunch of funny faces on Amazon, because they will not approve your request. OK, server's up and running. Now we just have to grab the IP address and SSH in. And mind you, every second this is running, we are paying. So let's get to it. Let's SSH into our brand new server. 
Let's just double check we have Python. Awesome, Anaconda. And let's see what's in our home directory. Cool, we have some predefined stuff from NVIDIA, some examples, things like that. Cool, but what I really want to do is clone the StyleGAN repo so I can get that software. So, to git clone and then the address to the StyleGAN repo. And we can go into the StyleGAN. We can see of everything here. So we can always run the pre-trained example after we install some requirements. So I'm going to jump back to the home directory and I'm going to make a requirements.txt file just so I can document exactly what pip requirements I need. And I'm going to insert some requirements from a blog post I'm going to link to uh, below in the description. Uh, there's another Medium post, someone did this and they determined all the requirements they need to run all this. So we'll do that. Install the requirements. All right, once pip is done installing, let's go back to the style again folder. And let's run that pre-trained example again. First thing it has to do is actually download the neural net from Google Drive. So this only happens the first time you run it, then it stores it into a local cache, which you can reuse on subsequent runs. Give it about a minute to run, and our generated face will be in a results folder, example.png. So now let's grab this image and check it out locally. So open up a new tab in your terminal program and just run the SCP command using your private key, connect to the IP address Amazon gave you, and I'm just gonna save example.png to the desktop. Okay, and let's see what the image looks like. Let's meet our new friend, drum roll please. All right, wow, looks pretty realistic. Let's, uh, let's generate another one. So I'm gonna go back and do another python pre-trained example.py and that should generate another image. Okay, and I'm going to copy it again, but this time I'm going to name it example underscore two dot png so I don't overwrite my other file. And let's check it out. So now I should see an entirely different face from example two. What the heck? It's basically the same person. Here they are side by side. I see a few differences like here on the top of the head. Example two has a little bit more green or like a dip in the head where example one doesn't have that. There are a couple other differences you could probably spot. But make for one of those interesting bar games to find the difference between two images. So that's one thing we could use this for. But what I really want is to make all those different faces. So why isn't the pre-trained example doing that? Let's look at the source code of the pre-trained example that they provide us and see what it's doing. Okay, that's where it downloads the neural network. Okay, pick a latent vector. So how these adversarial networks work is that as part of the inputs, it takes a latent vector, which in StyleGAN is a vector of I believe 512 uh, different values, which it uses throughout different levels of the neural net input hierarchy and that determines kind of the base of how the image gets generated. So changing that latent vector each time will result in a different looking face. Here what they did is they just set the seed of five to give a consistent random latent state each time. So if we just take this away, it'll generate a true latent vector each time when we run it. And let's give this another try. Here we go. This person definitely does not exist. This is a really weird one that came out, but it's different from the original one, so I'm happy. We can now run an infinite amount of face generations as we want on our server. So I don't want to keep hitting that Python script 10,000 times though, so let's run it in a loop. All right, let's modify their source code one last time. Here in the main function, I'm looking for here where we pick the random state. This is what we really need to do for each loop iteration. So I'm just going to declare this as a function here inside the scope. Def make image. Then indent all this to make Python happy. And you'll notice I provided an I argument, which will be the iteration we're in in the loop. That way we can give each image its own index when we save it. So here I'm just going to suffix each file name with the index. So example underscore not zero, one, two, three, four, based on where we are in the loop. OK, 
Okay, so now we just have to call make image a bunch of times in here. So for i in range, so let's start by doing this only 10 times to show that this can work. Make image and then give that i. So I'm just calling a simple loop, calling make image with a different index each time, and I'm going to write that to a new file each time I run the loop. So let's run this. And of course, if you look at the link below, I'll have a file with the actual source code I just edited on the server. So you can actually copy that and run that and tweak it yourself uh, without having to try to copy and paste it from the video. All right, so we're done. And if we look in results, we now see we have 10 images. So let's download them and check them out. Back in my local laptop now, I'm going to make a directory called desktop slash faces. And I'm going to copy all the 10 images I made on the remote server to my local folder one at a time and let's open them up. All right, so here's the guy from last time and here are the faces generated in our loop code. Example zero, example one, two, three, and see all of them here and I just keep going. And we can generate each one basically instantly. This script took under a minute to make 10 and if you just change that 10 in the script to a 10,000, and let it run for about an hour, you'll have 10,000 of these. Then you just copy them to your computer, shut down the server, and you're done. Now that you know how to make these faces, does it make it any less creepy? More creepy? Let me know in the comments below. Let me know what else you're interested in. Do you want to get into maybe age and gender classification of these images, or go deeper into the neural architecture and how the latent network works? Let me know. I'm happy to make future videos and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss those future videos on machine learning, computer vision and video, as well as data aggregation and analysis. That's it. Take care and stay data driven.